Hi guys. Um, I'm trying to be less perfectionistic about the videos I make and just like get stuff out there because I think it's important for feeling like I have a purpose to my life at all. Um, because that's been something I've been spiraling about recently. Um, aren't we all? <laughs> so this video came up in my recommended a little bit ago of a psychiatrist reacting to a girl who filmed herself in a manic episode because she came up with this theory about how like the One Direction song Stockholm was like about her or something. And that's great. And that's so cool. Um, but he was basically like, you know, explaining the ways that you can tell if someone's showing signs of a manic episode, like if they have disheveled hair, if their room is a mess, they have large pupils or they're talking really fast or whatever. And I'm like, that's all well and good, but I don't care. Like, I don't care what a psychiatrist has to say. Shouldn't you be giving someone shock therapy? And so now I have a schizophrenic rant to present to you all because I'm a little bit hypomanic from trying to cure myself with benfotiamine, which is actually going quite well. And maybe I can make a video about that too. I'm not sure how many of my audience is actually schizophrenic, but benfotiamine, which is a form of thiamine, can be used for lots of different things. And it also seems to be curing my long COVID or ME-CFS or whatever, all this mitochondrial fucking bullshit. So a psychiatrist can react to this video all they want and examine me for signs of insanity. And if they can apply behaviorism to understand my soul malady in the context of crumbling social infrastructure and the impending end of human civilization, then go right ahead. But I don't care. Your tools are inadequate. You'll never understand the quality of my reality. All you do is manage symptoms and the world is literally going to end before we come anywhere close to actually understanding what is wrong with crazy people or healing them in any real way beyond just managing symptoms with medications, which I do take. I personally just tell my psychiatrist what I want from him and he listens like a good servant. During our last appointment, I told him about sarcosine, which is a really, I think, well-known supplement for that has a lot of good clinical data on managing symptoms of schizophrenia. And it's a supplement, it's an over-the-counter supplement. It has pretty stellar, significant results and he'd never heard of it. He was like, thank you so much for this information. This could really help my other patients. I'm like, I could be doing your job, but I'm insane. And every morning I wake up with my identity obliterated and slowly become more and more insane until the, by the end of the day, I'm like, I could be a doctor, but I'm insane. So I tried to film this last night because I was really excited after watching this PBS special um, and wanted to see what would happen if I just talked, um, but my cognition and just my ability to string thoughts together is so abhorrent. Probably because a psychiatrist gave me shock therapy when I was 19, completely destroyed my life, and will be picking up the pieces forever. Um, soul malady. Electricity. But I think schizophrenics should be allowed to be schizophrenic because I think we are capable of learning and processing reality and consciousness in very unique ways that contribute to society when we're not actively, acutely estranged and alienated from it. So I watched this PBS special on how our brains map time and space through our consciousness. And don't expect me to explain this all perfectly clearly. I'm gonna link the video down below if you wanna go watch that, cause it's probably gonna be a much better explanation of this part. And then maybe you'll understand my fucking theory better. But basically there are these cells in the hippocampus called grid cells and place cells. And when you're walking, the grid cells are firing hexadirectionally. So in six directions, tracking your movement every three steps, every five steps and so on and so forth and all these different directions. And the grid created by these grid cells triggers the firing of place cells, which associate a place with this, this dimensional field of movement that you've created, forming a temporary neural model of your location in whatever space is. And time basically emerges from the behavior of matter and anything that changes internally essentially functions as a clock. This is less readily mapped onto neuroscience. Our bodies can obviously measure time, like the sleep-wake cycle, coordinated bodily movements in sports, playing music, all of that's an example of this. But time doesn't emerge from one part of our brain. It's probably more a result of different parts of our brain learning to tell time in different ways. And one way this is done is possibly through brain waves. So like when a rat is walking, these brain waves called theta waves cause a rapid pattern firing of grid cells coordinating past, present, and future movements. So basically as you're moving, you're actively always creating and orienting yourself to time space with each moment, with each wave. 
And it's thought that all of this evolved on a very basic level to create abstract conceptual models that track series of events between continuous variables. And it ended up being this very unique human experience of time and space and what that means to us. And so we use this whole system to not only understand our location, but also our relation to reality and ourselves on all levels. So maybe my brain turned the spatio-temporal cognition into a tool to completely obliterate my sense of self and orientation to reality. So if grid-like firing of theta waves is dysfunctional in schizophrenia, which it is, and it leads to us being unaware of where our bodies are in space or being dyspraxic or clumsy or having no sense of direction or whatever, and this originally possibly evolved in order to help us understand the world around us in order to feed ourselves and survive, form human connection, learn from mistakes and integrate new information into existing mental models. And maybe this dysfunction in spatio-temporal cognition is a part of what contributes to ipsiety disturbance and then ultimately to psychosis. And there is a theory that ipsiety disturbance is central to schizophrenia spectrum conditions, and this is what leads to psychosis. R.D. Lang's book, The Divided Self, is basically an existential humanist analysis of this phenomenon, and I can link a really good paper on it. So ipsiety disturbance, or the disturbance in minimal self, or the erosion of first-person perspective, leading to hyper-reflexive self-monitoring in order to reestablish a mindness of our own experience, which only further alienates you from your experience. And this interplays with the perceptual and conceptual disintegration of objects in the dimensional field, both internally and externally, creating a really disturbed grip on reality. So everything basically loses stability and starts to change meaning. And this is distinguished from similar themes in other disorders, like while some people with dissociative disorders might relate to some aspects of the e EASE and EAWE, which is the examination of anomalous self-experience and examination of anomalous world experience. And people with borderline personality disorder might have um, dysfunction in their meta-narrative. The defining characteristic of this phenomenon in schizophrenia is the self-other erosion, or the erosion of the self interacting with all of external reality. And this is fundamental and trait-like. There is a real self locked behind an infinite rotating and mutating collection of false selves, but it can only be accessed in fantasy and any interactions with the real world only serve to further alienate it, rendering it less and less real. Until there is a complete schizophrenic breakdown where all the defenses disintegrate and delusions merge with all the symbols of the external world and this is psychosis, theoretically. Basically, there is no you, there is no other, there is just this existential soup of conceptual and perceptual variables that are constantly shifting, difficult to interpret, that form these clocks I'm going to obsessively talk about now. And I can't speak to everyone's experience with anxiety and schizophrenia. This is just how I experience it. If my brain can't coordinate spatio-temporal information as I move through the world physically or in my mind, maybe what happens is what I experience, which is a continual deconstruction and reconstruction of the experience of space-time. I describe my psychosis to a friend like a four-dimensional clock, or like many clocks, and they're all spinning in my head all the time. And each moment or space I mentally or physically move through is creating a unique and arbitrary alignment of all the numbers and hands of all these clocks that create my reality. So each alignment in each moment is like the birth of a completely new dimension of the universe. So it feels like I am physically traveling through perpetually opening doors into new dimensions constantly, endlessly. The more this all spins wildly out of control, the more blatantly psychotic I am, the more my conceptual and perceptual awareness of objects in my space-time clock become entirely estranged from everyone else's clock. And this can happen less violently or more violently, where I'm literally scrambling to hold on to whatever reality momentarily appears and alter all my behavior around it. And then it quickly shifts again, even more violently, being transported into reality after reality after reality. And then the delusions get larger and more out of control. My behavior, affect, cognition all become completely disorganized because all the parts of these clocks are moving in increasingly absurd formations until eventually my space-time orientation becomes a universe totally separate from consensus reality with absolutely no relevant laws. But somehow I follow all the laws because this is now my reality. I've watched the 4D space-time clocks become reconstructed through psilocybin, and I know several others with schizophrenia who have also had this experience, and I want my next video to be interviewing those people I found um, and trying to get a little more insight 
into what is healing about it for us. Because the way psilocybin has restored the fluidity and clarity and function of the clocks, reversed my psychosis and disorganization, and healed me of so much of this disease is next to nothing. Like, nothing else has seemed to target actually what is going wrong. While I might sound insane right now, and believe me when I tell you that you're right, also believe me when I tell you that it was much, much, much worse. <laughs> so when I'm interacting with people, especially my space-time clocks form all these aberrant numbers and hands mapped onto their space-time clock, onto their behaviors and language and intentions for interacting with me, and my interpretation becomes so estranged from what is happening in reality that I do not understand what is going on between us, and I get all twisted up and start acting like a hysterical, paranoid schizo who really just wants to be understood, but at that point, I can't understand reality, my own or theirs, at all. So unless I can engineer the clocks to function properly, it's almost impossible to connect with a person or to access anything resembling my real self or to see theirs. Because their clocks are from an alien universe that threaten to destroy my clocks with incomprehensible information. When I have less of dopamine, the spatio-temporal cognition is cognitioning, the clocks are clocking. But when I have too little dopamine to map concepts that come up in conversation and make connections to things people say, when my clocks are just not moving or filled with sand or almost seem gone completely, it's impossible to connect then too. But sometimes the clocks are functioning almost normally, but never really normally, because no matter what, it's really hard for me to think and hold all of these variables of reality in my mind at once continuously, because they are always constantly shifting and opening portals that pass me through completely different dimensions every time I move around them. Even in my periods of stability, I am schizophrenic, because this is the way that I fundamentally experience reality. It just gets out of control in blatant psychosis. So I'm going to connect this with an article I read. People who are born blind with congenital blindness do not develop schizophrenia, like not a single person with congenital blindness has been diagnosed with schizophrenia. I wonder if their theta grid patterns become so strong from navigating the world without sight from birth that it resists this process from the beginning. Basically, it strengthens their spatio-temporal models of the world and therefore the abstract maps of meaning and symbolic patterns that form reality that the disintegration just can't happen. But then it's the opposite. If you develop blindness later, you're more likely to be diagnosed with schizophrenia or psychosis. Maybe because forming new waves and connectivity patterns on top of old maps of the world is incredibly disorienting and leads to disintegration of the same system. And if you're born deaf and blind, you're even more likely to develop schizophrenia or psychosis because, again, this creates a very unstable position ontologically. You need the perfect balance to develop this spatio-temporal awareness, apparently, and therefore a stable position in the world to protect you from what schizophrenia is. Because schizophrenia is, at its core, in my opinion, and R.D. Lang's opinion, a primary ontological insecurity, formerly called ipsiety disturbance. And maybe the thought disorder is the same thing or emerges from it or they mutually interact and it's all indistinguishable from each other. Anyways, hope this didn't help or make sense. I'm gonna go take my antipsychotic. But genuinely, I hope this made some sort of sense. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Like, if the schizophrenic brain, if my brain cannot orient me to space-time as I am moving through the world physically or mentally, then it's just going to create some really bizarre experiences that maybe could be explained by this system in the brain that's designed for mapping space and time or creating it because we don't know what is actually out there outside of our brains. Um, and I know that what can happen inside of a brain is pretty crazy. And it can't be ascertained by behaviorism. It can't. Okay, thank you.